You also write that underdog strategies are hard, or at least mm -hmm. harder than giant yeah. strategies. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the, the choice you have as an underdog is if you're going to choose to fight and choose to w fight to win, um, there are a series of strategies available to you, but they are all more costly than the strategies available to the favorite. Um, so I give the example of a chapter about a, uh, and a software mogul in Silicon Valley, an Indian guy who coaches his daughter's, 12-year-old daughter's ba basketball team. And they are without talent. They are, by his own, <laughs> by his own admission, this was like, they didn't know how to, barely knew how to play the game. And he takes them all the way to the national championships. He does it by, he instructs them, they're going to play the full court press every minute of every game and defend every inch of the court, right? Now, that's actually a very effective strategy, particularly in age class basketball. Um, if you're the underdog, it's usually your only chance of winning is to play a really, really aggressive defense. It requires, however, that everyone in your team expend maximum effort every minute of the game. You cannot loaf for an instant. You have to be in really good shape, and you have to run yourself ragged, and you cannot let up. Most people will not play that way because it's too difficult. Um, if I said to you, we're not going to be doing des elegantly designed plays and shooting gorgeous baskets and passing the ball, we're just going to be doing this for the entire game, and you're going to be exhausted at the end. Most kids would say, that's not why I signed up. So it's like that's a kind of classic illustration of that effort Effort is the root, one of the roots available to the underdog. I can outwork you, even if uh, I may not be able to outspend you, but I can outwork you. Well, outworking is a tall order. It's not easy to do. You know, that's uh, as anyone who has worked in a startup knows. That's the one of the stressful parts of it. Um, but successful startups, I am. I've never seen any actual data on this, but. Do we think that people working for successful startups work longer hours than people who work for Fortune 500 companies? My guess is yes. These lessons are so applicable to, to business owners and to, to entrepreneurs. I wonder why didn't you look to um, include any of those examples in the book? Uh, well, I talk about I mean, I talk about innovators, and I talk, I have moments when I talk about Ingovar Kamprad or I talk about the side. But, um, I don't know. I mean, you choose whatever story is. I could easily have. Uh, I just got caught up in different things, you know. I don't think it matters. You know, the thing about, particularly the business audience, which has been an audience that I have, my books have been um, well read in that world. And I sort of know that part of my audience very well. I don't think they, in order to draw meaning from an example, it doesn't have to be from their precise world. I mean, the thing about what's one of the one of the fascinating things that has happened in the business world over the last 20 years is the increasing level of intellectual sophistication, the willingness to look everywhere for um, ideas and for inspiration. Not just, I mean, these days if you meet a, a business executive, they'll they'll know as much about social psychology as a social psychologist. I mean, they'll be reading books on neuroscience to get clues about how to talk to their customers. I mean, this is not true 30 years ago. So I don't think people, I don't think it matters. I think people will take insight wherever it comes.